One, what I would like to talk about today with you is, um, is about God's love in action. So if I just write that down. So love in action is a part of a series that I've been starting to talk to people about. And this particular um, discussion I'd like us to centre around the issues of sincerity um, or hypocrisy. which are very, two very different states, one of sincerity and one of hypocrisy. And the main reason why I wanted to talk about this with you is because what, what I'm finding, particularly in the Western world, is that there is often an appearance of outward sincerity, but when you start discussing detailed information with people individually, they go from outward sincerity into into hypocrisy quite rapidly and for, for you to progress towards God you must at some point come to terms with the fact that God doesn't accept hypocrisy now in the first century I used to say to people things like woe to the scribes and Pharisees hypocrites because they strained out the gnat and gulped down the camel have you ever heard of that saying Never heard of that some of you who are religious might have heard that saying and what I meant by that was they, they, they made big mountains out of tiny little things, mountains out of molehills, as the saying goes, and at the same time, they allowed the really big issues to go completely unnoticed. Does that make sense? And if you look at love in action, and we look at the word spirituality, so if I just write that word. What does spirituality mean to you? Now, if I had, when I asked that question the last time we were here at Forest Row, um, spirituality meant a lot of things for people, but not many people actually talked about love with regard to what it meant to them. So to me, true spirituality is all about love. It's all about the development of the individual in love. And it's all about growing in the capacity to love. Now, there are two forms of love, as we've talked about before. One is God's love entering you. And obviously, if you grow in your capacity to receive God's love, then your soul has the ability to change and transform. And once you've changed and transformed, you now have grown in your capacity to express your love to others automatically so it's all about true spirituality is all about growing in love and unless love is growing then really it means nothing can you see that like really we are not being spiritual at all unless love is growing that's the underlying thing to keep in mind what I notice people doing though is they have this facade of love where where they use the words of love but when you feel what they're feeling or what they're expressing towards you in terms of their feelings often it just feels like a quite nasty and terrible emotions coming out of it now if you think historically in terms of many religions do this so while they use the words of love they then express at the same time judgment towards people who are not of their religious faith for example does that make sense now in that moment they are being unloving and therefore it doesn't matter what words they're using the fact is that they are being completely unloving in that particular space now and this brings me to the point of what is real spirituality well real spirituality is about growth in love actually growing in your ability to express love to others and also in your ability to love yourself and your ability to love the environment. So it means growing in the ability in all of these different areas. So let's look at the areas where you would be growing in your ability to love if you were truly spiritual. Well, firstly, the love that you have with God would increase. So that would go up as you grew in your capacity to love. Your capacity to love yourself would increase. So you have now a stronger 
not only desire but a stronger um, acknowledgement of yourself as and your desires and your passions and your true sincere motivations and your ability to love your partner would increase in other words you would have less arguments and fights but not because of um, agreeing with each other but rather because you now know how to handle these agreements within from a space of love the disagreements from a space of love you would have more love for your children if you had any so there would be less instant anger or rage with your children like you know a lot of times young children can do seemingly uh, very unpredictable things that we often wonder what where that came from and oftentimes in that moment we get triggered into rage and anger that would happen less as time progressed if we were growing in love we would have also more love for others in the way that we express our love so we we would care about other people's feelings and we would care about their life and we'd care about what they are doing with their life and we'd want to assist any person not from a condition of judgment but rather from a condition of anybody who wants some help would be willing to provide the help even at times if that providing that help meant that we had to forgo something we wanted we would still probably do that and then there's the environment generally which we would also grow in love for because we understand that that's all part of God's creation and so we would automatically start loving the environment more as well if we were truly growing in love now when we look at that list you can see there's quite a lot of growth in different areas of love that we, we, we potentially can grow in now if our love was truly in action we would other people around us would notice changes in every one of these areas of our life does that make sense so they'd notice that we're treating the environment differently they'd notice that we're treating them differently they'd notice that we treat our children differently they'd notice that we're treating our partner differently they'd notice that we have a bit more honoring of ourselves in most of our relationships and so forth and they'd also notice a growing uh, interaction with God where where you started to feel very comfortable with that interaction with God and, and its growth now what I notice a lot of people doing who discover the divine love path or discover divine truth is they want to believe that they're growing in every one of these areas because we all want to believe that when we do something that it's actually working right? But when you look at what's really going on from a day-to-day -day perspective in their life there is actually very little growth and I've known many people who have come along to seminars that I've been presenting for example in Australia for four years and during that four-year period I've not seen them grow in love at all over that entire time but they say they want to grow in love and they're obviously coming to the seminars for some reason there's obviously some underlying reason why they're coming and they're saying that they want to be more loving of their partner and they want to receive God's love and so forth and so forth but their day-to-day -day life is not demonstrating more love now we also have others that we know that we meet them and then after a few months they're making huge changes in their lives like one after another after another and it's and everyone around them is noticing that they're becoming more loving and more expressive of that love towards them and the environment is noticing it their own environment and you know their children sometimes comment like I had one child come up and say I'm so glad my mummy met you because she's not angry with me anymore like so he even her his her own child noticed a big change in the, the mother just by by coming to terms with the truth and this is what I wanted to raise with with you because what I find here in England generally is that there is a huge amount of facade with regard to spirituality in other words there are so many people here who like to have the new age instant gratification of some kind of pursuit which often then in, 
encourages a lot of very dark spirits to enter into bartering or bribery type situations with the person rather than actually making changes in the way they personally love in these areas. Right? And if you think of the last uh, groups we had, for those of you who attended the groups in Forest Row, can you remember some of the very, very unloving behaviour that went on in the different groups from people who believed they were loving? Right? And this is a, the issue that we face, is that we need to, at some point, come to terms with what we're actually doing personally. So we need to ask ourselves the question, am I sincere about growing in love, or am I just being a hypocrite? Do I, do I want to talk about it, and I, do I want to think about it, but actually not change my life about it? 